Hello, my name's Simon Crafer. We're in Motorland, Aragon, in the Suzuki garage, as you can see, next to the machine of Juan Mir. Because this week's Tech Talk is about the devices now used in MotoGP, meaning front whole shot device and rear ride height device. The Suzuki was the last manufacturer to get the rear ride height device in Austria, which means now everyone has both front and rear devices. Before we talk about the technical side, let's talk a little bit of history where they first turned up. The front devices have been in the motocross paddock for decades. I remember as a young fella going around on my production motocross bike, pushing the button on the little plastic guard there on the front of the front forks, grabbing the front wheel with my legs, front brake, handlebars, and pulling the forks down into place, click, and the little device would hold the front forks compressed so the center of gravity is lower, meaning when you get off the start, there's less wheelie, which means more acceleration, more acceleration, more chance of being first to the first corner, which in motocross terms is the whole shot, hence the whole shot device. So history in the MotoGP paddock, I have no idea why it took until 2019 to turn up first on the front of the Aprilia and soon after on uh, the Suzuki and filtered through. The last one to get it was into 2021 this year, the Yamaha. And the only good thing I can think about that is I got to see the Yamaha without the front device versus everybody else with it or with both. And what I saw was clearly more wheelie off the start for the Yamaha. The riders had to climb over the front. They got more wheelie and uh, it proves the whole shot device works. Big thank you to the motocross paddock for that one. So now let's talk about the history of the rear ride height device. Um, we first saw it on the Ducati. Uh, the wing nut that's still there. You turn it and it lowers the bike, lower center of gravity. So when I say center of gravity, think of the crankshaft center, how close it is to the ground, you know? As the, back, the bike lowers, the crank gets closer to the ground, less wheelie, more acceleration. Um, the big grenade that uh, Ducati threw into the MotoGP paddock was when we could see them being able to activate the device during the lap, not just off the start because that meant they could win off all of the slow turns under acceleration, you know? So the rear lower, less wheelie, more acceleration, and win two to three tenths on some tracks. And you're talking two, three tenths, that makes the difference. It can make the difference in MotoGP between qualifying uh, two rows ahead or not. So the difference between fighting for the win or podium or not you know, it's so massive. When you think in this class, the engines are uh, limited by the same rules, capacity, etc. then control electronics, control tires, they've all got the same tires. It's still the same choice of tires. Suspension is WP or Olin's, and now they're both really close. Everyone runs the same Brembo brakes, and you're talking and engineers at Ducati figured out a way to win two, three tenths is huge. So then there was a scramble. Yamaha were the first to respond um, early 2020 with a device of their own that could be both used uh, off the start and off the turns. Then it took till mid last season. Aragon actually, I remember looking at the KTM and the Honda. Then it took to, to 2021 to see the Aprilia and then finally the Suzuki well into 2021. So now everyone's got both. But let's also mention how these devices work during the lap. Uh, you can, the ones I can see, it's not compressing the shock to lower the rear, it is extending like hydraulically the rod that goes from the bottom of the swing arm to the suspension linkage, which is like a triangle. And so uh, the, the shock and suspension all stays the same, just a, a rod lengthens, 
lowering the back. Huh? And then when they break, it can take the weight off the back and click back into place. So next up, I have to tell you that just because they've got the device doesn't mean it works well. Because I've seen how it takes half a season to get, for most manufacturers, to get it working uh, acceptably, you know, then maybe even up to a year before it's working well. So why? When they first turn up with them, most of them fall too quickly. You know, we can see on the telly. And if it falls quickly, it takes weight off the rear tire when it falls quick, which means the thing spins up. Then when it hits the bottom, it doesn't do it smoothly enough, so causes some instability and even wheelie, defeating the whole purpose of having the device. Then when they get to the end of the straight, if it length, you know, um, comes back, comes up too quickly, it's going to throw weight on the front, which rider's not going to be happy, especially if he's an aggressive breaker, you know. I've, I've heard the aggressive breakers that just said, get it off, you know. And um, so then they slow it down. And uh, slowing it down rear-wise helps. Uh, everyone said that works, you know, it keeps the weight on the rear, makes it smooth, in the rear tire, makes it smooth, no instability or spinning. But slowly means you have to activate it earlier, making it tricky for the rider to figure out when to activate it. We'll come back to that. Then, um, at the end of the straight, if it's too slow coming back, I've heard complaints of, um, first of all, the weight staying more rear, then locking the front. <coughs> Scary stuff. Then, if you have got the front hooked up, the rear coming up, but carrying the rear tire off the floor, so no engine brake in that period till the rear gets back on the ground, then the engine brake can manage it, the management can figure that out. Got some, but it's not consistent. Riders like consistency, you know? So that has a plus if it comes back too slowly. Engineers have told me that the device struggles to lock back into position. So then imagine if it doesn't, it's like closing a door. If you do it too softly, it's closed, but it hasn't gone click, you know? So get into the next corner, it starts lowering again. When, right when you didn't want it, runs wide, no ground clearance. So that's why I'm saying it takes time to get them sorted out. Then, when they are sorted out, they're working as good as they can get them, how hard do you think it would be to enter as fast as these guys do, turn, you know, get the thing, and then get on the throttle, all that horsepower, fastest accelerating motorcycles, fronts, and then try to figure out when the right moment is to push the button to start lowering it? It's got to be super hard. And it's why we've seen Ducati lead the charge again for a device that's automatic, meaning it can't be electronic or in any way but by rules, but they can arm it when it's approaching a turn, when there's less time, uh, sorry, more time, less stress, they can arm it, and then when they break into the corner, when, for example, the forks get to full extension, where I've heard that that is when all the rear weight's on the rear tyre, it's the optimum moment to hit it, you know? Because if you hit it too early and it starts lowering and taking weight off the rear before the front's extended fully, not all the weight's on the rear, and you hit it early, it's going to spin up, then lose more. So this auto device can decide when the forks have fully extended, for example, when the moment's right and start doing it by itself, freeing up the rider's brain, you know, to think about other things and get the optimum drive off the turn, winning the most amount of time. Where, to me, is this all going to go? It's super interesting. Meaning, not just technically, are these devices going to get refined enough to make it all the way through to your production superbikes like wings have or are they going to be banned like some engineers want see you at Mizano for the next tech talk